Don't get me started on Saturday cart to Saturday morning cartoons again. Oh, hey, wow. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I did used to get up at 5 a.m. to watch the Inhumanoids. Uh, wow. Was, yeah. Was, What's an Inhumanoid? Oh, it was a it was a a, a, a toy brand that had a 30 minute long commercial uh, each week. And it was uh, it was hyper violent. And for some reason, I was really into it because I dug the toys. So it was kind of the other way around, where like I liked the toys, so I wanted to watch the cartoon. That's how '80s marketing worked. I would be curious if uh, Transformers would be considered hyper violent, or if um, I, I, I guess not. They they never really seemed to cause any harm until uh, till their movie where they killed everybody off to, uh, to introduce the new toy line. That's true. Yeah, I guess that is a pretty aggressive way to do that. Yeah. Um, now you got me thinking about when you said uh, no harm. I'm thinking about a Dukes of Hazard um, Transformers crossover. Just a good old bots. Yeah. That's Never that. doing no harm. Yeah, that pro probably wouldn't really fly nowadays. Very no, those would be the Decepticons, which would be, uh, I guess, Boss Hog would be in a, a big old, big old airliner, big old private jet, with uh, with uh, you know steer horns right there on the on the. I don't know if that would affect the aerodynamics of the Decepticon if it had big old. I'd have to see them in a wind tunnel. Uh, the, the horns. That's right. You know the horns; they weren't meant for aerodynamics. They're meant for like. For battle smoking, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But, but I, their their shape though, I still don't think that they're that they're super unaerodynamic. I mean, you know, that's fair. We may just be on the cusp of seeing flying flying longhorns. I think we're almost there. A couple more generations. Yeah, just uh, really just need a catapult. <laughs> a catapult. Ca ca catapult. Cattle pult. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've won Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Of course, there was a cartoon um, that was based on cowboys that were, in fact, cows. You know, anthropomorphized humans, cows that were also, um, you know, Western Western style. Uh, wranglers and, and such they, yeah this is they, the 80s they, they took themselves to market mm -hmm. that is disturbing to me yeah like, there's only one reason for a cowboy and that is to drive a whole herd of cattle yeah, to, to their doom yeah mm -hmm. so these cowboys that were actually cattle what did they do well, they struggled with internalized uh, systemic um, challenges that made them more likely to engage in behaviors that were destructive to their own kind. Wow. Yeah. Just like all of us, I guess. I'm Gustav Alverson of Alverson Dairy Farms. I've lived my entire life on a dairy farm and, well, Lord knows, sometimes you just kind of want to get away. Well, I got to thinking, hot air balloon, of course. All it would take is a big old basket. I already got one of those. A nice bed sheet. Got a couple quilts from my grandma. It still shows up right together. Make a nice big old balloon. And then, of course, there's the problem of the hot air. And, well, if you know anything about dairy farms, you know these cows produce an awful lot of methane, but it's a great source of fuel. So I thought, well, how am I going to get all that precious methane into a hot air balloon? Well, using my patent pending flatulizer technology, you attach it to your cow. You know where. And that flatulizer will collect all that precious methane and it'll funnel it directly into the engine or intake that we're going to use to propel ourselves up into the air. From there, it acts like any other type of hot air balloon. You light the precious gaseous material on fire and it propels you up into the sky. It's a beautiful thing. If you're interested about taking a ride, contact me, Justin Alverson, about checking out the Derriere. The Derriere, bottoms up.
And now, and now life, life on the on street. The, street. The, the tale of a post-apocalyptic post Sesame, Sesame Street. street. It's, a it's a sunny day, day but, everything but everything is definitely, is definitely not, not a okay. okay Hi, I'm Gordon. I'm one of the only uh, humans on uh, Sesame Street because most of the street is covered with monsters. Uh, but uh, apparently they're not terrifying monsters to us because they're soft and furry. Well, you might recognize me from my uh, my long crooked nose. Uh, I am uh, Gonzo, which you might be surprised to see me here on the street, but unfortunately the theater has not been able to have live performances for, for quite some time now, so I've, I've had to take on a rent-controlled situation here on the street. Uh, they don't... They don't know about Camilla, so I'm going to have to ask you all to keep that on the down low for me, please. Me, Cookie Monster. Long time since me have cookie. Last cookie found very old. Still eat it, though. Very sorry me did. Gordon, quick. Me see cow fly. Boost me up. Uh, wait, boost, bo what do you mean boost you up? Where there's milk, there are cookies. I, I don't know if I can lift you that high, Cookie Monster. You've been eating, uh, I, I don't think you've had as many cookies, but I, I get the feeling you've kind of been overcompensating by eating other things. It true. Me have hole in my soul that cannot be filled by human interaction. Yeah, it looks like you've been filling it with like hubcaps and other shit. Me think round might taste like cookie. Does it? Always disappointment. Please, Gordon, me need milk for cookie for okay. helping with abandonment issues. Gotcha. Well, hey, uh, there's a there's a ladder over here. I don't know if it's going to get you that high. Uh, Mr. Hooper left it out here when he died. Ladder helped me get high. Yeah, it starts with L. Gordon, you help teach Cookie. There's not much else to do here except for talk to monsters. There are no jobs. The only shop closed down when Mr. Hooper died. Gordon, think about this for a minute. In this neighborhood, you are the monster. Oh, my God. I mean, I know we're zoned for monsters. I don't know if we're zoned for chickens. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> She's got quite a mouth on her. <laughs> well, you know, she, she keeps me young. She keeps me young. <laughs> I'm used to unusual things, but even I, I was a little taken aback when I, when I looked up to the sky and I saw nothing but, uh, but cattle everywhere. I, I was looking on the ground, which is where I expect to see something like that. But then I, I glanced up and lo and behold, moo. You bring chicken. Good, I bring waffle. Have pocket waffle. Enough to share. Oh, well, I, what, what's your waffle's name? My, my chicken's name is Camilla. Waffle's name is breakfast. Oh, breakfast, is that, is that Dutch? Let's find out. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Turns out not Dutch, was Belgian. Levi Jordash of Get Along Industries. And I've been out here on these prairies moving doggies from one place to another long enough to know that there are challenges that the modern cattlemen face. Here at Get Along Industries, we've taken a long, hard look at the problems that the modern cowpoke faces, and we've come up with an elegant solution the cattle pult. That's right, you load your fine little doggies up right into this apparatus and it will send it sailing over whatever obstacles you find in the way. You show me one coyote that can capture a cattle midair 
and I'll show you a coyote that's earned his dinner. The catapult solves all of the issues that you might have in regards to fuel efficiency, in regards to moving those cattle over those highways and freeways that scar the land. And let's be honest, it's just plain fun. Because here at Get Along Industries, we know that it ain't just about cow poking, it's about cow living. Whoa, whoo, ha, ah, that one, that one went pretty far. <laughs> you know, we don't have to just stick to pigs in that thing. We could probably put anything in there we wanted. You mean like a person? Well, I wasn't going to say it, but since you did, why not a person? Okay, uh, any other persons around here? You've always been real adventurous. You may just go bungee jumping. Bungee and you come back. I don't know how you explain it. It's something to do with physics, but you come back. Uh, you know, it's the, the rubber band stretchy thing it brings you back. It, yeah. This uh, this is pretty much a one uh, one way trip. Go with me here, though. What if when we put you in the thing, it flings you? You got two umbrellas, one in each hand, and you deploy them right at the apogee, right before you start to come down. Well, hang Theoretically. On. Here's my hypothesis. Uh -huh. the umbrellas will keep you from being splatted all over the prairie. You know what? That's not a bad idea, but uh, I got one umbrella here. I have a broken umbrella. Okay, why not? Let's try it. Welcome to Professor Watt's Smile Time Science Show. I'm Professor Watt. We have a question from a young man who says he's coming in from outside right now. Let's have a look, shall we? If our hands were our feet and our feet were our hands, would we all be upside down or would we be doing handstands? Think about that. John, let me see if I have this straight. Are you contemplating having a surgery that swaps your hands and feet? I have to recommend against this procedure. It's going to complicate your life in ways you can't even imagine yet. We'll hear from some other experts just to make sure that my opinion is the correct one. Aloysius Farthing here, receiving my medical degree in the year 1215. I can cure what ails you, and I can ail what cures you. What witchery speaketh thou of? Hands where feet should be, and feet where hands should be. Clearly you've got an imbalance of the humors, and you need blood let out of your system immediately. Present thine arm or leg, and I shall relieve you of this imbalance. Witch! Arthur Pennyfeather, physician of the 17th century. I've often heard of people from far off lands with hands for feet and feet for hands. In fact, one of my own patients, I remember well, Barbara Begreg, with a leg for an arm and an arm for a leg. I didn't get paid for that one. Medical Android Jeremiah Q1412, responding to query. In the future, where I come from, Hands and feet, we no longer have separate words for these. We simply refer to the entire set as Hafitensis. Where your Hafitensis happen to be, that's up to you. Many cultures have them interchangeable. In the future, you are no longer locked into one form. We find this to be liberating. If you are born into a body that has the wrong number in the wrong place, you're free to switch them out as you like. We are a more enlightened society. In fact, many people who ask scientific questions here in the future do not even have to run up the stairs first. Well, there you have it, John. I hope we answered your science questions. All of you watchers out there, you send in your own science questions and Professor Watt and the gang will answer them all. We'll see you next time on Professor Watt's Smile Time Science Show.
Terry, thank you for meeting me here one on one. It's uh, I was a little suspicious when you asked me to be part, you know, to, to come and talk to you like this one on one. But, you know, I figured maybe this is going to lead to something better. Maybe this is a date. I don't know. I mean, I'm not opposed to it. You're hunky host John after all. Terry, unfortunately, this is our private elimination meeting. One of us is eliminated, and it's not me. Oh, I was about to say sorry for you, but then that means... Oh, that means it's me. I'm afraid so. Well, dang. back to Sir Mimer. Today is going to be a fantastic challenge instead of mental or physical or whatever. Today's an engineering challenge. Oh, good. Jason, how are your engineering skills? Uh, I um, opened the hood of my car once and saw that there was an engine there. Tim, yes. your team won last week's challenge. That's two in a row you've won. You are riding high. Where do you go from here? I think we'll, we'll definitely go up or down from here, man. That if you can only move up or down, then how are you going to get anywhere? I think we could definitely move sideways. Would you say that your morale has been devastated or obliterated? I would say it's been annihilated. The team has really taken a hit not having Terry there to be the scapegoat. And so I'm, I'm afraid that we're gonna be scrambling to find somebody else to take the blame for everything. And I can tell you right now, it ain't gonna be this guy. Here is today's challenge. I'm going to give you three minutes to once again, run madly around your domiciles and locate things that are stackable. The, all of these items must be smaller than your hand. You're then gonna bring those things back and stack them up in a tower. You'll have three minutes to both collect your items and to stack your items. It's like 20 Lincoln logs stacked height-wise. Yeah, if you can make that work, that would be amazing. This is gonna be hard. It yeah. might be. Your three minutes will begin right now. All right, we're gonna go downstairs. Have an idea. Get a cup. That seems like a good idea. I have some trinkets. Oh, Let's see. Pops are one of those. Smaller than my hand. Okay, we got that. Okay. I am impressive in the stacking department. Smaller the than my hand. Scariest. That's definitely not smaller. Yeah. Shouldn't be a problem. There Lots are so many Batman. things that are bigger than your hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Oh, hey, that works. That's a failure. Oh, I just spilled that. That's fine. I'll have to clean it up later. I don't abide failures. Positive mental attitudes. Three no, minutes. I thought I had three, three minutes. small hands, but they feel ginormous minutes. today. That's my favorite song. Hmm. All right, Clara is already stacking some poker chips there. Problemo in mi vida. The ceiling in my house is too short, John. Claire is taking a unique approach, different than what everybody else has taken so far. Oh, wow, that's a really good idea. We have two um, minutes left. Okay, uh, two minutes. This is a this is a job sure. for the garage. Hello, garage, my old friend. Oh. You will be working as a team, so the average height of your team's tower will be against the average height of the other team. Like oh, no. Too big. Also too big. Too big. Oh, Everything's no. bigger than my hand. But tall is good, right? Oh, it works. Taller is better. Is this? My coworkers will come in tomorrow and wonder what the hell happened. Oh, this is going to be a sad turn of events. If one minute yeah. remains, you might want to think about starting to build. Oh, don't. I'm not confident. 
It looks precarious. That that's scary now. You have one minute left. If you have not started <laughs> stacking yet, this might be a good time to start stacking. Go. Some of those are looking really solid, and some of them are questionable. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Oh, this is going to break something. There we go. That's perfect. Yep, you bet. In tall, in Five tall. seconds. I guess. really. Yeah, I'm not going to. I have, I am. I am ceased playing. I think I'm just about tapped out as well. It looks fairly stable. What have you got there? <laughs> they might be Giants mug down there. We've got Zatarain's Creole seasoning, which is always a tasty mix. We've got uh, 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 a reused jar that's full of D&D uh, &D dice. We've got a, a styrofoam brick. We've got just a pile of dice that I, a uh, fistful of dice that I had there. If only the Funko Pops had been a little more square on top. <laughs> I picked the wrong, he has a really flat head. I was like, oh, it's gonna work. No. Nope. Uh, it's poker chips. Uh, they are black and red. They have the four suits of cards upon them. And Jimmy gave them to us for our honeymoon. It was a very nice gift that we, no, get out of here. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much, but hightail it right now. My sweet Starting baby. to regret naming your cat Destructor. Starts with an iPhone box, iPhone case, and then a solar a uh, phone charger, an old iPhone case, some sticky notes, sticky notes there, box of Advil, uh, a protein cup with a panda face on it, two iPhones, a thing of nuts, the habanero bold, if you will, more sticky notes, some sunscreen, and then, I don't know if you can see that, some rodent repellent, because we, we have a mouse problem. It, uh, well, it ate everything in my drawer and then shit everywhere, so. I got a can of green beans, three spice containers, a jar of salt, and three containers of vinaigrette dressing from wheat fields. We got some spackle. We got a container of mini screwdrivers. We got ourselves some white chalk. We got ourselves some organic tomato sauce, a la Kirkland. Some electrical tape a ball of string, a around of string, and a foam painter's brush. A cup from Florida, a thing of purple Play-Doh, orange sticky notes, my tiny Pokemon card binder, my pencil sharpener, and some weird pushkin cork animal. I got cards against humanity, a deck of playing cards, more cards against humanity, makeup, I think it's a mask, uh, <laughs> Some tobacco, I got aspirin, ibuprofen, and uh, more painkillers on top. I have to say this without breathing so it doesn't fall over. It's mostly post-it notes and business cards and coupons. We're running into a really weird perspective issue since you're behind the stack. It looks enormous. It looks like it looks like it's the size of your torso. Using the CD case, we're gonna measure how many CD cases tall your tower is. And I would even say four and a quarter if I were being honest. Okay, four and a quarter CDs tall. There's two. Two and two three, and three quarters. quarters. Please be careful. Please be careful. Got three and a half. I'm gonna say two and three quarter. Great. One CD case. Just over two CD cases. So two plus CDs tall. Three and a half. Four. Kevin, yours is four tall. Four Woo! tall. Mine's 3.125. 12. 12 what? I'm sorry. 1.2. Your average for your team, 3.3125. The ah. other team had an average of 2.75 CD cases tall. Your team is the winner. Nice. Woo! Sweet. Do we get any extra points for straightest tower? Yeah. Um, you already won, so why not? Yes. <laughs> yeah.
Kelsey, how does it feel to win the award for least straight tower? Because it, it gets the job done, which is also pretty indicative of, yeah, my personality. It's not the straightest, but I get the job done, I think. I don't know. No one's ever given me any, any feedback as far so far. So, yeah. No news is good news. What is one object that you collected that you thought would help, but ended up being completely worthless? This guy from uh, the Dodgeball movie, because I thought his flat head would help me, but turns out having a flat head was no good here, so. Not flat enough. So far, it seems like we're pretty unstoppable. Man, I better not have some wood. Huh. Well, I mean, your team did lose the past two challenges, but you know, yeah. one in a row. <laughs> anything I've ever gotten in a row, so. Honestly, the biggest challenge is I've got all this ideas of things that I could stack in my house, but I never put them in the context of the size of my hand. Do you have any message for the other team? If, if you don't have a kitchen mirror, like I do, I highly suggest you get one. Because then while you're washing your dishes, you can take a good hard look at yourself and tell yourself how badly you fucked up. Whoa! I need a kitchen mirror, jeez. I tell you what, a kitchen mirror, best mirror. <laughs> look at while you're doing dishes. Nobody looks at dishes while they're doing them. They just feel around with their hands. Look at yourself. You are beautiful, you are loved. Do your dishes in style. Jenny, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Carol, you're playing with fire. These are full of vinegar and oil, so that would be a mess. Vinegar and oil is an easy cleanup. You just have to spread lettuce everywhere. Your house would smell like a Subway sandwich shop for two years. Kevin, what's the deal with the pills, dude? Well, I have a lot of headaches because I spend a lot of time in front of the computer. That's actually way sadder of an answer than I was hoping to get. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, Carol, would you consider yourself a sandwich artist? Yes, I have the imagination for being a sandwich artist. I'm sure. just trying to prepare you to get into the headspace for when you open your own Subway shop there in your house. Yes, I could do better than Subway. If we had 30 minutes, John, I can do better. <laughs> Tim, holy crap, you've got an entire can tower there. All yeah, day. I know. I, I had to prove to myself I that I could. Is any of that by any chance jambalaya girl brand jambalaya in a can? <laughs> No, that is a, that's a box only treat, like wine. Eugene, you have the most unusual tower. Uh, the top of your tower is essentially a bunch of balled up string. What's going on there? I'm a, I'm a guy that, you know, doesn't do things the easy way just because they're easy. I do them because, you know, what the hell? What the hell indeed. That sums up this entire challenge, really, when you think about it. I would take my team out of the basement into the light. Now, Tim, Carol says she wants to take you all into the light. Uh, that feels like maybe she wants you all to die. She did mail us all packets of what she wrote Kool-Aid on <laughs> and asked us to mix it up and drink it at the end of the show. So we'll see what happens. I saw that and I was like, I don't need anything to help me be more cool. Kevin, did you already drink that packet of Kool-Aid? Uh, I must have because I can't find that Kool-Aid anywhere. Oh, yeah. thousand maniacs into this or are we <laughs> Josh I'm sorry I'm laughing at your hair it's amazing <laughs> it is amazing what do we call that uh the oofta <laughs> <laughs> you scared the dog I did yes. <laughs> he's like I'm out of here <laughs> dog's done with your bullshit <laughs> with my charisma and my animalistic good looks. That's how I get anywhere in life. Good. Uh, no drinking bird. Oh, I feel like I'm watching an episode. Schmirkader. What's our pink, pink of mink? There we go. 
<laughs> Yay. I've got Rockabye Baby, Lullabies, and Stylings of Blink-182. <laughs> Hopefully, thinking of things in your home that are smaller okay. than your home. I have rulers and tape measures. Doesn't most people, don't most people, doesn't, because I can't do grammar. That's you just being unaware of your privilege, Carol. If that doesn't work out, uh, I do know that uh, Critigan is, is uh, hiring, so... Lick it. Lick it and see it if it still stands up. Which of Newton's laws dealt with momentum? Uh, 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 uh. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can continue. Yeah, that, that would hurt. <laughs>